Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go inside the crankcase of a huge diesel engine? This is just one of the many interesting jobs that marine engineers do. And by interesting, I mean hot and messy. So at the end of the day, nothing beats some good food, a few bottles of beer, and enjoying the company of your crewmates to reset your mind and body and go back to work on the next day. On the previous episode, our ship arrived in Egypt to discharge cargo. The operations went on for about five days, and afterwards, we left port and headed towards Ashdod in Israel. Upon arrival, we were ordered to drop anchor and stay in the anchorage area for a few days to wait for our turn to enter the port. While at anchor, we had the opportunity to carry out some jobs on the main engine, which we wouldn't be able to do while the engine was running. One of these jobs was measuring the deflection of the main engine's crankshaft. I already have a previous video which explains this job in detail, so I won't be repeating the explanations here. But to keep things short, the purpose of measuring the crankshaft deflection is to determine if the crankshaft is excessively bending, which in turn gives an indication of main bearing wear or misalignment. Since this job is in an enclosed space, which is also slippery with oil, it is very important to have adequate lighting, such as a headlamp, so as to keep your hands free and maintain a good grip on the handholds and prevent slipping. This job is usually carried out by the second engineer. It is done by using a dial gauge placed in between the crank webs, and then repositioning the crank pin to be as close to bottom dead center as possible without dislodging the dial gauge, after which the gauge is then set to zero. The crankshaft is then rotated and the measurements are taken at specific points during the rotation. There are a total of five measuring points relative to the position of the piston and the crank pin. First is the starting point or zero point, which is one of the sides nearest to bottom dead center. Then port side, top dead center, starboard side, and finally the opposite side of the starting point again as close as possible to bottom dead center. These measurements will determine if the crankshaft's bending is within tolerable limits as specified by the manufacturer. It will also show which main bearings have excessive clearance.
I remember the first time I took these measurements, back when I was a cadet. Before that, I used to be the one stationed at the crankcase doors, just writing down the measurements that the second engineer took. But after several times of watching, I felt confident, so I volunteered to do it myself. It can be intimidating at first, but of course, for me, there was also some excitement as I have been entrusted to do a job usually done by my superiors. For some people, I could imagine being inside the crankcase can trigger claustrophobia. I mean, it's a tight space, dark, wet, and slippery. It's like being inside the belly of a huge beast. Now, if that's not enough, wait until the huge metal parts start moving. Eventually, back then, I kind of found my groove, and from then on, I would always volunteer to go in and take the measurements myself. That's one less job for the second engineer, and more experience gained by me. One of the other things we managed to do was to test run the main engine using the emergency or local control console. First thing to do was to disconnect the remote control or the governor linkage. Once this is done, the main engine can only be controlled by means of the local console. Next step is to remove the locks on the local console knobs. Then, communication between the local side console and the bridge is established. The bridge gives the engine speed order by means of the telegraph. The engineer will then acknowledge the order and start the main engine. The main engine is then tested to run ahead and a stern. After testing, it's time to secure the local console and reconnect the remote control linkage. To make sure that the remote control is working properly, the engineers will again start the main engine from the engine control room console. For those of you who are wondering, that red tape on the RPM indicator from 50 to 60 RPM is called the critical speed range. Heavy vibration occurs when the engine is kept running within that speed, so the engineers either increase or decrease the speed as needed in order to avoid staying within that range. Our ship is here at the Anchorage area right now. We are just waiting for our schedule to go in for loading operations. But it's going to take about I think, two more days before it's our turn to go in at the very least. So 
while we are still here. Incidentally, today is someone's birthday. And we have decided to treat him to a small celebration. It's not very grand, but at least it's something. We can't do an all-out celebration because we're very near to the port. And, uh, you know, things might happen. And we need uh, people to be alert. A bit of good food, a few bottles of beer, small things. But these small things, they definitely go a very long way to uplift the morale of everyone on board, especially the birthday celebrant. Working on board a ship is physically and mentally demanding. But of course, we also have time allotted for rest and recreation. Today is the wiper's birthday, so I gave him a few cases of beer so we could all have a celebration. The food, of course, is courtesy of the chief cook and the mess man. We have limited recreation facilities on board, but for Filipino seafarers, a karaoke machine is more than enough to provide entertainment. A seafarer's life is hard, but it shouldn't have to be miserable. And sometimes, the simplest of things that could bring a little smile to their faces could go a long way to make life a bit easier.